morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we assemble today, Father, we want to thank you and praise you again that we are sons and daughters of God, that we can come boldly into the throne of grace according to your word, Father God, because we have accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord. And Father God, we, as we come before you this day with all confidence, with all assurance, with reverence and respect, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we want to thank again and praise you for loving us so much. You sent your son, your best, to die for us, pay the price for sin, sickness, disease, and spiritual death. Father, we thank you. We are in blood covenant with you because of the blood of Jesus. We have accepted him. We thank you. We are now sons and daughters of God. We're adopted. Father, we cry out, Abba, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Father, before we go any further, we, we do lift up the people, Father God. In, in ten, Tennessee, I, I was understanding that yesterday there was, they, there was 10 dead and all the damage and destruction. So we pray for the people down there, Father God. We pray for those that have lost loved ones, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the spirit of comfort will surround them, Father God, and comfort them, Father God, and give them peace and strength and and Strengthen with might in the inner man according to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16 on, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We also pray, Father God, for those left behind in Afghanistan, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Those tens of thousands, Father God, those that are the Americans and those that are trying to that have worked with the United States of America, that they're being slaughtered down there, Father God, because the jihadists are going house to house to kill them and hang them. And, and uh, Father God, we just pray for all the protection for them, Father God, that people will come to the rescue, Father God. We pray for divine help, Father God. You would send your ministering angels, Father God, to help them and protect them, Father God, in Jesus' glorious name. And Father, we want to thank you and praise you again, Father God. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We accept you as Savior, Lord, Healer, Redeemer, Deliverer, Baptizer, and Holy Ghost, our soon coming King. You're our total propitiation for sin, sickness, disease, and spiritual death. So, Father, we thank you. And Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, whom the world may not see, but he's come to live within us and upon us. We do welcome the Holy Spirit in this place today. The Holy Spirit, you may move and manifest yourself severally as you will. And Father, we do, 1 Corinthians 12, 31, we do covet the best gift, Father God, according to your word. 1 Corinthians 14, 1, you said desire spiritual gifts. So Father God, we do that, Father, in Jesus' name. We want to thank you and praise you ahead of time. And say, we remind you, you are bound from this place. You are bound from all those within our hearing, within our seeing and hearing us in Jesus' name. And all the saints would say, Amen. Amen. Oh, I want to remind people, uh, at the end of the service, we will have communion, so... If you uh, want to get, if you have bread, crackers, or juice, or whatever you, know, you want to partake along with us, uh, I was impressed today. We're going to start off with Hebrews chapter six, and uh, we're going to read verse eleven and a few verses here. And I'm going to read this to you first out of the Amplified version because it says it more. It's amplifying. It's saying it more deeper. But we do strongly and earnestly desire for each of you to show the same diligence 
sincerity all the way through. And that's where a lot of people miss it. They don't show the same diligence and sincerity all the way through the test trials we go through. And realizing and enjoying the full assurance and development of your hope until the end. So we are supposed to have full assurance of what God has already spoken to us and all his promises. Verse 12, in order that you may grow disinterested. No, that's, yeah. Yeah, disinterested and become, so that you don't become disinterested and become spiritually sluggard, but imitators, behaving as do those that have faith, that is by their leaning on the entire personality of God in Christ in absolute trust and confidence in his power, his wisdom, his goodness, and by practice of patience, endurance, and waiting, you are inheriting the promises. And we, we, we've, uh, in fact, we're going we're gonna to go back to Hebrews chapter 9 in a moment, but remember last week, I believe it was, we gave you in, in the Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, that how God is blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But I want to read this to you again, out of, because we, we mentioned the word inheritance. And when a person is inherited, when you're in a will, you don't receive anything of that will until the person, the testator, has passed on. Well, we have a covenant with Almighty God, and we're going to start with a verse, verse 15. Well, let's go back to verse 14. But how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this reason, or this cause, is he is the mediator of a new covenant by means of his death for the redemption of, of transgressions under the and the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of eternal life, eternal inheritance, excuse me. For where there is a testament, there also must necessity be the death of a testator. For a testament is in force after men are dead, since it has no power at all while the testator lives. Therefore, even the first covenant was declared, was not indicated without blood. So what we have an inheritance, and in, in unfortunately, a lot of people don't know what legally belongs to us. Well, we've talked about the blessings before and what the blessings are. We're going to get more in depth today because people are not receiving the blessings that belong to them either through lack of knowledge. Hebrews 4 and 6 of my people are destroyed or perished for lack of knowledge. Well, if you don't know what belongs to you, you'll never be able to receive or partake of it. And unfortunately, that's what our responsibility as teachers and preachers and ministers of God, anyone that stands behind a pulpit is supposed to be teaching what God's word says, his covenant. So we want to establish some facts in, in, about the Word of God. First of all, God's not God's not a man; He should lie. So everything God has spoken is true. But if, if God is God, puts the emphasis on His Word. In fact, Psalm one one thirty eight and two says, "You." Well, I just read it. I'll read it to you out of the, out of the Amplified Version. I'm gonna go back to it. Set a, set a quoting it. Better read it. Psalm 138, verse 2, I'm reading to you, the Amplified Version. I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name, your, your, loving, your loving kindness and for your truth and for your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all else your name and your word. And you have magnified your word even above your name. So God puts emphasis on his word. Well, Psalm 119, 89, it said your word is forever settled in heaven. And uh, we also see in... in uh, Isaiah 40 in verse uh, 7 through 9, where his word is, well, again, I said a quote again. Let's, let's read it. Sometimes we do people an injustice by reading, uh, by quoting it, not reading it to them. Because you, you need to see it for yourself. You need to be able to not just hear it, but you need to see it and then hear it. And unfortunately, many times uh, people hear the word but they don't follow along, and therefore they're missing out on what's really going along. And uh, I know for a fact, uh, different stories of Brother Hagin said throughout the years, people are missing in the example in the area of healing. But once they started following along in their Bible, brought their Bible along, and started following along the teaching, they got their, they received their promise, they received their healing. So it's very imperative that people follow along and study in your Word, study the Word of God, and. Uh, Isaiah chapter 40 starts with verse 7. It says, The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely people will, people are grass. And in verse 8, The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. First Peter chapter 1, verse 25, says the same thing. The word of God stands forever. So 
Everything is established on God's word. So God puts emphasis on his word. And when we want to receive the blessings that belong to us to be partakers of that, we have to know what the word says. We have to go to the word. In fact, in Joshua chapter one, um, uh, Joshua was told to, to meditate upon the word day and night. He said, before you even utter out of your mouth, there you'll, be, you'll be strong and have success, whatever you do. So it's important that we get into the word. We gave you a few weeks ago again, we talked about what is man. We read Proverbs chapter four, where Solomon said, my son, attend to my words. Keep them in the midst of your heart. See, the word has to be not only in your head. And many people have knowledge of the word of God, but they don't have it in their heart. And when they go to prayer, they go to ask God for what they're petitioning for. They don't receive it. And they wonder why. Well, maybe it was God says no this time, or it wasn't God's will. No, that's not true. His word and his will are one. In fact, in First John chapter 5, it says that. He said, in verse 14, 15, it said, if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears if we always have those petitions we ask of him. So we have confidence. We're supposed to have blessed assurance. We sang that song years ago, different times, you know, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Well, blessed assurance is through the word of God. See, when you know the word, the word gets in your spirit. It's one thing. In fact, I'm going to jump around back to John, John's gospel. John chapter 8. Again, quoting it is great and preaching it most of the time I do, but sometimes we short people, short change them by, by not reading it out of the word. John chapter 8, and start with verse uh, 31. Jesus said uh, to the Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Well, knowing the truth you have to know it in your spirit. Not see people have mental assent. They agree with what the word says. They've they've heard the word before, but they don't really know for sure what it says. Therefore, they don't have confidence when they go to God in prayer. They don't don't have confidence. Well, the only way you get the confidence is by studying on the word of God, feeding on the word of God, speaking the word of God, and then when you pray, you pray the word of God. In fact, in, in the while well, we're in John's gospel, John chapter, or excuse me, let's go back to, to Mark. Mark chapter 14. We're doing these things a little different this morning. Sometimes we have to change. This is a little different for me sometimes. What am I going to now? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Therefore, I say, whatsoever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So you've got to believe that you've got them before you get them. So if a person goes to God, well, I hope that he's hearing me or I hope it's true. No, if you don't know for sure, if you don't have the assurance, you're never going to get from God what he's petitioned you because you have an adversary out there who is the devil. In fact, in John 10, 10 a, Jesus said, the thief comes but for to steal, to kill and destroy. So remember the parable of sore, Matthew, Mark and Luke. The devil comes immediately once the word is sown. So he'll try to take what you've heard and take it out of your heart. He'll try to take it away from you. So yeah, that's why we have to put the word strong with us. That's why Jesus said, if you if you notice, follow my word and get the word in you, then you're my disciples indeed. So then you'll know the truth. Well, knowing of the truth is one thing, but knowing the truth, you have so much confidence you're not going to be wavered. Let's go to... Uh, to uh, uh, Roman, Romans, no, yeah, Romans, Romans, Romans chapter four, we all, we always quote verse 17, well, I'm going to back up a little bit, verse, verse 16. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be according to grace, so the promises might be sure to all to the seed, not only to, to those who are in the law or of the law, but also to those who are of faith, the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. So once we accept Jesus Christ, we are, we are in the category with, with faithful father Abraham. Galatians 3.29 says, if, if you're Christ, you're Abraham's seed and you're an heir according to the promise. So, 2 Corinthians 1 and 20 says all the promises of God are what? Yes and amen, not yea and nay. So you have to go to the word to build a strong foundation. It's like if you build a house and 
We've read that before in Matthew chapter 7, also Luke chapter 6. But he who builds his house and, and digs deep and builds on a solid foundation. Well, when the storms come, they're storms of life. And when they come, they're horrendous sometimes, whether it be floods or it be sickness and disease or poverty, whatever it might become upon you. Those are storms of life. Well, the devil's out there causing the storms. We're supposed to rebuke the storms. We're supposed to speak to those storms, tell them to peace be and still, peace and be still, and to get, depart from us. We're supposed to do it in Jesus' name. So to, to obtain the things we have to be, we have to be. Uh, uh, what's the word I want to look here for? Uh, we want to be uh, relentless. Relentless. You want to be. In fact, I think the word relentless means uh, to be uh, unyielding, unflinching, un, uh, uh, determined. So uh, too many times people are not determined. They're not, they're not, when, when tests and trials come and they start to waver because the word's not strong enough or deep enough within them, therefore they start to falter and wave and, and they start to uh, give up. They, start to, they, they just give in to what's going on in the situations. Well, God says we're supposed to stand. When you've done all to stand, stand therefore. Well, people got to stand. That's what it said in Ephesians chapter 6. If you've done all to stand, you'll stand. But see, if you haven't done it all, you're not going to be able to stand because you're going to be wavering. But all the promises belong to us. All the blessings belong to us. Let's go back to uh, Deuteronomy real quick. We do a little, quite a bit of page turn today, and it's, good, it's a good thing. It used to be a thing years ago. Let your fingers do the walking through the yellow pages. Well, we'll let our fingers do the walking through the Bible, through the Word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey my voice, the voice of the Lord your God, and serve him carefully in all of his commandments, all his directions, which I command you this day, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. So blessings, the word blessing is different, quite a bit, quite a full meaning to it, but it means physical, prosperity, food, clothing, harvest, longevity, and children. We can see in a nation, when a nation, when Israel was blessed of God, they were divine, they were protected divinely, they were blessed financially, materially, they had no lacks, they had no wants. They were, they were, they were just totally blessed of God. Everybody, anybody, everybody hated them because God, in fact, today, many people hate Jews because God, God blesses the Jews, and, and he still does because we're in covenant with him because of Abraham. But so these things, if you, if you find out what they are, you go out and keep on reading. It said these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. And if, if you obey God's voice, well, you obey his voice by obeying the word of God because that's the spoken word is God's, is God's voice recorded for you and I. Second Timothy chapter 3 says, every scripture, is, in other words, is an only of God or God breathed. God breathed. So God had the Holy Spirit record these things through a man, or through men, I should say, that we have God's thoughts before us. Remember in Isaiah 55 where God says, around verse 7, 8, and 9, uh, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my ways, your ways, for as high as heaven is above the earth, so my thoughts above your thoughts, my ways above your ways. Well, we have access to God's thoughts because uh, Isaiah, Psalm 33 and 11 says, his thoughts are to a thousand generations. So we have the Holy Spirit on the inside who will give us the thoughts of God, plus the word of God is recorded thoughts of God. He'll put us in remembrance of these things and reveal and explain these, the, God's thoughts to us. Look at the revelation to what God's thinking. God is all-knowing. So we need to find out what, see, God, if we want to know what's going on, we got to find out from the one that has all the knowledge. That's God Almighty. Well, he's already got it recorded for us, and we have the guidance and the leading by the Holy Spirit. We have Romans chapter 8 and verse 14. It says, those are the sons, the daughters of God, are led by the Spirit of God because the Spirit will always lead you into the Word. He will never lead you apart from the Word. God can't be separated from His Word. God and His Word are one. That's why in Psalm 78 and 41, it said how Israel continually limited God. Well, we limit God by not praying effectively, by not praying the Word of God, by not speaking the Word of God. Many people pray but their confession is contrary to what they're what they've already prayed. So that that man, in fact, James chapter one, so that, not that man think he'll receive anything. He's double minded, unstable in all his ways. So we're supposed to be confident. We're supposed to have a knowing, a blessed assurance of what God says. He he's also able to perform. In fact, now if we go back to Romans chapter four, we'll go on a little further. 
verse, verse uh, 17, which was something we should be doing all the time. It says, it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the, in the presence of him which, which believe God, who gives life to the dead and calls all things, which be not as though they are. So when you, you and I have a situation, we need to speak the word to call it into existence. It may not be there right now, but it will come because God has given man the ability to speak things in to come to pass or speak things into existence. Verse 18. Who contrary to hope in hope believed, so he became the father of many nations. According to what was spoken, so shall your seed be. And not being weak in faith. That's where people get off in, in problem. They get weak in faith. They, they don't have the trust in God or the faith in God. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. Well, that word trust there in the Hebrew is the same word we have faith for in the New Testament. And uh, where was I at here? Verse, verse, verse 19. Consider not his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old in the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced or fully persuaded that what he had promised he was also able to perform. And therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone, for it was imputed to him, but also for those imputed to us who believe in him, who also raised him up, raised up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Now let's, let's go back, let's go back to Galatians. So every blessing that God promised to Abraham and his descendants belonged to you and I, because they when I we quoted before a few moments ago, Ephesians chapter one and verse three, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. The blessings are for you here in the earth. Not when you get to heaven, you get rewards in heaven. The blessings we need here in the earth. Galatians chapter three, and we're going to do verse. Uh, all right, verse eight. Well, oh, no, let's back up a little further. Verse 7, therefore, uh, therefore know that only the those who are of faith are, are, are the sons of Abraham. As the scripture foreseen that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with the believing Abraham. And uh, then let's jump down to verse 13, which we quote all the time. For Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, for it is written, having become a curse for us, so it is written, curse of anyone who hangs upon a tree. And I better start slowing down because I'm getting ahead of myself here. I'm preaching too fast. I'm trying to teach. So but verse 14 is very imperative. We, we skipped that so many times. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Well, the blessings, all the blessings that God has out there for you and I, we have to find out what those blessings are because they're in his word. When you find out what the blessings are, when you pray according to the word of God, Mark 11, 24, then when you pray, you believe we receive it. But unfortunately, many people are like James chapter 4, verse 3. He says, when you pray, you pray amiss. In other words, they're praying one way, talking another way, or their motivation is wrong. But and people get discouraged and disgruntled. Well, it wasn't God's will to heal. It wasn't God's will to prosper. It wasn't God's will for this to happen, uh, of that baby to live or whatever. That's totally wrong. It's not scriptural. Their lives from the pit of hell. Because the word of God is so clear, but you and I have to find out what the word of God says to know what legally, rightfully belongs to us so we can obtain it. See, we need to obtain the, the promises that are meant for you and I, but you don't get them by just sitting around doing nothing or, or having someone else pray for you all the time. You know, as a minister, I can carry people on my faith for so long, especially baby Christians. But as people grow older in the Lord, I can't always carry them on my faith alone. They have to use their faith also. Well, Romans 10, 17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more you hear the word, the more you read the word and speak the word out loud to you, it's going to enhance your faith. Faith will build up strong within you. And you'll be able to say, bless God, it's mine. I take it now. Nothing, No matter what happens, you're not going to waver. You're not going to just stumble. You're going to say, devil, that belongs to me. Take your hands off it. And, and But when we, when we don't be very... Uh, uh, relentless, we start compromising or wavering. Uh, and I, I, I want to go back. I, I quoted before, but I want to read to you again. First, let's go back to First John. I'll read it to you out of the Amplified Version. 
chapter, chapter 5 here. Verse 4. For whoever is born of God is victorious over the world, over everything the world throws against us, over all the curse, over everything the devil tries to do to us. That is, the victory that conquers the world, what? Even our faith. And we'll jump down to verse 14 and 15. And this is the confidence, all the assurance, the privilege of boldness, which we have in him, for we are sure that if we ask anything according to what? His will, his own plan, he listens to us. And if, if since we positively know that he listens to us, whatever we ask, we know that we have with, with settled and absolute knowledge that we have been granted to us the petitions we've asked for or the requests we made of him. So we, if we have blessed assurance, nothing is going to cause us to waver because his word and his will are one. Again, you can't separate God from his word. And many people, uh, they, they go to God in prayer, but again, they don't go to God in faith in prayer. Uh, Hebrews chapter 6 or 11, verse 6 says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Those who come to him must believe that he is, and what? A rewarder of those who diligently seek him, not haphazardly, not timidly, not occasionally or whenever it's convenient, but no, whoever come to him diligently, that means forcefully, strongly. God, God is a strong God. He expects us to be strong. In fact, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, not our own might. So when we realize we have the greater one on the inside of us, 1 John 4, 4, we have power right magnifying on the inside of us coming up and going out. So it's like when God created Abraham, excuse me, Adam, Adam, wherever Adam went, there was blessings were supposed to come out of him. Well, after he sinned, nothing but the curse came out of him. Well, now that we're sons and daughters of God, we got the spirit of God on the inside of us. Blessings are supposed to flow out of us and be around us. We're supposed to be partakers. In fact, Abraham was so blessed that he had all the gold and the cattle. He was he was so wealthy. Well, God God doesn't mind you having wealth as long as wealth doesn't have you. But a lot of times people, you, you can't serve God and money both. And too many times people are so caught up in money and having things, they don't they push you out of sight. And, and uh, then you're, you've, made, you've made money or, or things for God. And in fact, I think, I think years ago when we first heard Mike Warnke, when the boys were teenagers, we went up to Zabloid to hear Mike Warnke speak. And Mike Warnke at one time was an ex-Satanist high priest, if I remember correctly. And he got, he got saved, and he was out on drugs and everything else. He got so high all the time. He comes down, he didn't know where he was at, lost, lost everything he had. You know. But anyway, uh, he said, whatever you go to or seek in, in your time of trouble, that's your God. So if you go to alcohol, you made alcohol your God. If you go to drugs, that drugs your God. If you go to fear, that's your God. But we're supposed to go to God Almighty in confidence and blessed assurance that whatever he said, he's also able to perform as Father Abraham. Because we're descendants of Abraham through faith, and because of the seed Jesus Christ, we're supposed to have faith then towards God, like Abraham did. Abraham believed God. He trusted in God with all of his heart. Well, that means you and I have to do something then. We have to make changes in our lives. We have to start turning ourselves around and putting the focus and our priorities on. What's it? Used to have a TV thing, a PGF, for kids and put God first. They talk to our young kids. They used to be on TV years ago, you know, about the same time Willie George was on. But anyway, you know, but they had little cartoons and everything. But put God first. Well, most of the time we don't put God first. We put him somewhere in between or back or last. Sometimes we go to God as a last resort, not the first, but the last. And uh, I can't remember too long ago, I, just, I did the same thing. I was doing something. I'm going, well, I guess I can pray, but that's something I should have done the first time. Well, that's, should, our going to God in prayer should not be a last resort. It should be a first resort. So we put him first. All these things will come into, into order. They'll come into place where they're supposed to be. God doesn't want us to lack. In fact, remember Psalm, Psalm uh, 34 and 10, I believe it is. It said, young lions do suffer hunger and lack. But those that seek and inquire of the Lord and require on the authority of his word, the necessity of your need shall not lack any beneficial thing. That's amplified version. So God does, 
We're not supposed to be lackers. We're supposed to be those full of everything. God wants us blessed. Come, we'll go back to Deuteronomy 28. Bless your coming in. Bless your going out. Whatever you put your hand on to, you're blessed. You're the head, not the tail. You're the above and not the beneath. That's how God sees you and I because of what he has provided for you and I. But until we come to that revelation or realization that we are sons and daughters of God, that we have a blood covenant with Almighty God, these things belong to us legally, legally. But we have to do something about it because if we don't, it doesn't get done. People get disappointed. They get discouraged. They look at all the chaos in the world and they say, well, how can a loving God do that? Well, loving God's not doing that. There's a devil around here in 2 Corinthians 4, 4. It says the God of this world, that's a little G. When Adam sinned, he transferred the authority over and Satan took it over. He's the, we talked before, he's the God of this world, little G. But he's the one that controls what happens in the atmosphere. He's the one that controls and he's the one that causes these winds and tornadoes and, and the floods and different things, catastrophes. Remember when Jesus was in the back of the boat sleeping? He told the disciples, let's go to the other side. Well, the storm came up. They go back to our master, master, don't you care? We're going to perish. The boat's taking on water. He said, ye have little faith. He got up and he rebuked the wind and the waves. That storm wasn't from Almighty. He wasn't rebuking his heavenly father. He was rebuking, rebuking the situation in his life, in their lives. That's what we are supposed to do. You have God-given ability. You have God-given authority to do that. But if you and I don't do that, it don't get done. I mean, I, I mean it's, so, it's so imperative that the, the body of Christ, especially in these last days, that people realize where we're at, how strong we're going to have to be in faith in Almighty God, that no matter what goes on around us, God is there to protect us. He sent angels to help us and guide us. In fact, everyone has an angel. We read, in, I believe it's in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, that every, every, one, every child has an administering angel. Well, when you get older, you don't lose your angel. Well, Hebrews 1 and 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent to minister to and for those that are heirs of salvation? Angels are out there, but we don't loose them. We don't, but if we, do so, if we don't know they're there, they don't help us at all. They can't. Go back to uh, uh, Deuteronomy where he says, I send my angel before you. He said, but don't sin because he can't forgive you. Well, if we're out there doing things we shouldn't be doing, the angels just got to fold their arms. They can't do a thing. Can't do a thing. Not because they can't, don't want to, but if they, if we don't get right with God, do what we're supposed to do, if we don't loose them to protect us, every every parent should be protecting their child by loosing the ministering angel on a daily basis, and but also the confessions we make about our kids. Some, some parents say well, that kid's never going to amount to nothing, or that kid's going to go out in the road and get hit by a car. People say the dumbest things sometimes out of fear, you know. But you got to realize we got ministering angels, but they need to be loose on a continual basis, not only for your kids, but also for yourselves. Yeah. When you're at work, when you're driving your car, when you're at home at night. Those guys, those guys are out there. But we don't, we don't, we don't know that they're at our disposal. Then we don't know how to lose them, how how available they are to help us out, and therefore they can't do anything for us. And and people, were, well, why did God allow that wreck to happen? Well, God didn't have a choice. Remember Matthew sixteen nineteen, Matthew eighteen eighteen. King James says, "Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Wherever you loose on earth is loose in heaven." Well, another translation says, "Whatever you forbid in the earth is already forbidden in heaven. Whatever you permit in the earth has to be allowed in heaven." So if we allow things to happen in our lives. God's already given the church the keys and the authority to bind and lose to take authority over the situations. We have we have the blood covenant. Just like when, when God Moses God told Moses about the Passover lamb, and it's going to start celebrating Passover. Slaughter that Passover lamb, put the blood on the doorpost and the lentils. That's the past. That was a that was an animal. We have the blood of Jesus Christ, our Passover lamb. John chapter 1, verse 29 says, John the Baptist was, was baptizing in the River Jordan. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Well, they knew what that meant, but most Christians don't know what that means. His blood still lives today. His blood still protects today. You can put the blood on your house like they did on their doorpost. The angel of death couldn't come in. Plead the blood over yourself on a continual basis. We have blood covenant rights, and most Christians don't know that we have a right because we're under the blood, protected by the blood. When we take, a blood, when we take our communion here in a little bit, when we do the pass, we it's a, the, the, the meals like our our Passover meal, but it's, it's a meal, uh, the Lord's the Lord's meal, the Lord's supper. But it, the, it's so significant because of the blood 
that he shed for you and I, that's putting God in remembrance, that's putting us in remembrance, that we're in covenant with Almighty God. All these things, all these protections, all the blessings belong to you and I. If you, if you go back to even Matt, Matthew chapter 5, talking about the Beatitudes, the first nine verses blesses this, blesses that, bless God, bless the, the blessings are there. We have to learn to be able to walk in those blessings, that they are there for us. Not just so you can be something so special and something, you know, I'm better than anybody. No, 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 no. But when people say that you see that you're God blessed, God protect, whatever you got, I want some of that. But if you're in fear and doubt and in poverty all the time and, and you're sick all the time, people say, I don't know what you got, but I don't think I want part of that. Or your, or your Christianity doesn't mean anything. Well, yeah, Christianity does. Religion doesn't. There's a vast difference, and most people don't realize. They think because you're a Christian, you're just being religious. No, you're not. Christianity is a way of life. We're classified in religion, but we are part of the body of Christ. So you, people call it, put your, they used to do that because you had to put yourself in a phone book that way into Christians, you know, and the churches and, and different things, you know. But Christianity is that life. And Jesus is the head. We're the body. Therefore, the head is healed and whole. The, bed, the, the, the head is, is, is divine. We're supposed to be partakers of the divine promises and blessings. Ephesians chapter 2 says we're, we've been sit, we're made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we have our authority in heaven. Everything we do in the word of God and by prayer and speak in Jesus' name, heaven backs you and I up. But if we don't speak the word and pray the word and then do the word, be a doer of the word, like James said, not a hearer only, God can't back us up. He can't back up you. Just, he loves you. But if you don't speak or you're not speaking the word, and, and being a doer of the word, God can't back up what you're, what you're doing on your own. He wants to, but he's limited. Psalm 78, 41, he is limited in what he can do for you and I, because if we end the covenant, we do what the word says, we don't limit God. We don't put the brakes on God. God can freely, freely give us all things. I said freely. The price has already been paid. So... <clears throat> I know we're right here. I got lost in time this morning. Come down here. <laughs> I was out there praying. I didn't realize it was 20 after the time. I, I anyway, <clears throat> I uh, I give you one, one more last scripture. I think here. Did I, give you, did I give you Luke 12, 32? No. Luke 12, 32. Jesus said to his disciples, little children, it's your, God, it's your father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. God delights in giving us the promises and the blessings of the kingdom. They belong to you and I. God has provided through Jesus Christ, through his shed blood, and because we're sons and daughters of God, we're blessed with Abraham. If you don't know how Abraham was blessed, go back to the word. Find out how God blessed Abraham. So we're, we're, we're part of that heritage. We're part of that partaker. We're supposed to be blessed. God wants us that way. God, I mean, I mean, I've said this before, but I've, I've, I've heard, I think it was even Jerry Savelle say it. And I heard Brother Copeland say it too. But years ago, one of the famous sayings of Oral Roberts was, God is a good God. They used to make Pentecostal preachers mad. I don't know why. They're thinking God is a bad guy because the sickness and disease or poverty and lack or catastrophes. I don't know what they're thinking of, but they're not going, they're not, they have stinking thinking. Not, they don't think according to the word of God. They're not thinking like a believer is supposed to think because we have access to the, God's thoughts. We know how God is, what he does, what he will do. Therefore, God is, Jesus said, God is a good God. Well, Jesus didn't lie. God can't lie. The word of God doesn't lie. Spirit of truth can't lie. Therefore, the man lies and deceives the man or the devil. The, the man listening to the devil. As far, in fact, Jesus said in, in, in John's gospel, the devil is the father of lies. So anybody goes around lying all the time, guess where you're getting your information from. So anyway, I guess I will close with that. I guess if I, I didn't give you a title at the beginning because uh, I had two or three I could give you. I guess I'd have to give you something right now just off, just off the top. But 
being relentless in obtaining your blessing, your blessings. Be relentless in retaining, receiving your blessings. Good enough title, I guess. <clears throat> now as we get ready to take up our uh, uh, communion. Let me forget to pray for Julie and Chris will be on their way home either tonight or tomorrow. And uh, we have such great news that Annie had her baby the other day. I guess I'll help you off this forget the other day, but Olive Marie. Olive Marie, yes, yes, Olive Marie. And yeah, cute as a bug in a rug. I mean, she is so adorable, adorable. I saw a picture of her. And uh just well, look at her. Look at her parents, and look at her her, her, her heritage, and uh, gonna be a beautiful, beautiful young girl. Six pound, I believe, thirteen ounces. And uh, we thank God that Annie's doing good. I think she's coming home today, and uh, that'll be a blessing. And answer answer the prayer. That was a desire of their heart, and they received their beautiful child. So, anyway, as as the elements were passed out, and uh, Mark chapter 11, again, excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. When Paul got this revelation, Jesus gave it to him when he was in the third heaven. And he said, uh, verse 23, For I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. <clears throat> Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks of this cup in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat, the, eat that bread and drink of that cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner Drinks, brings judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak, many are sick, and many die. So, Heavenly Father, according to 1 John 1, 7, 9, Father God, we come to we judge ourselves now, Father, before you in the name of Jesus. Because we, your word says that we would confess our sins before you, Father God, with the blood of Jesus Christ, we cleanse us from all sin and all unrighteousness, that we be put back in right standing with you, Father God. And Father, we want to thank you and praise you that we have the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus Christ cleansing us, Father God. So as we confess our sins right now before you, Father, in Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you also, according to your word, like in Psalm 103, that our sins are thrown as far as the east from the west. And we remember them no more, Father, in the name of Jesus. But the blood of Jesus totally annihilates the, the sins, Father God. They're totally gone. We thank you, Father God. We There's no remembrance of you. You have no remembrance of them anymore, Father, now in the name of Jesus. So, Father God, we want to thank you and praise you in Jesus' glorious name. Now, as he took the bread, remember the bread is symbolic of his broken body, and he was whipped, scourged, beaten so bad and bloody that he was like raw hamburger meat. He was made that way so we could, uh, could obtain our healing, but also maintain divine health, walk in soundness and wholeness. So, Dear Lord Jesus, as we get ready to partake today, sir, as you your body was broken on that cross, and you were ripped and torn to piece, you paid a price for our healing in our physical body. So we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. We partake right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Same manner, took the cup, lifted the cup. So this is the cup of the blood of my of my of my covenant. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. Just like the Passover blood, Father God, we thank you that we have the perfect blood, the perfect sacrifice. Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God. And Father, we thank you for his cleansing power. We thank you for, our, for his protecting power, delivering power, healing power, Father, in the name of Jesus. So Satan, in Jesus' name, take your hands off us. We're blood bought. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, we've been bought with a price. Take your hands off us, loose us, and let us go. We demand our blood come to right Satan in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, we thank you and praise you. And Jesus, we worship you and thank you for shedding your blood on Calvary's tree. We might be cleansed, whole, and free. Thank you, Jesus.
Oh, we'll, we'll take up our communion. And uh, is there anybody, anything else with? Huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that. Where am I going? I don't know. Uh, we did. We prayed at the beginning for the flood victims and also for uh, Afghanistan. But rem remember those people in your prayers and, and thank God uh, for getting people out safely and protect for divine protection for them. I'm going to Malachi if I ever get there. Chapter three. Again, this is a, this is part of our covenant, and and uh, people say, well, you know, tithing was under the law. I got news for you: tithing started way before the law. It started with Adam. Abraham was tithing, so it happened way before the law came to came to effect. In fact, we see in Hebrews chapter seven that Jesus Christ, our great high priest, ever liveth to receive tithes and offerings. So, but some people get confused over that and they get angry over it and they think, well, that's Old Testament. No, tithing is not Old Testament. And uh, verse verse eight says, uh, "Will a man rob God?" And you, but you say, "How?" And and uh, he said, "In withholding your tithes and offerings, for you are cursed with a curse. You have robbed me, even the whole nation. Bring all the tithes into my storehouse, or may be proof in my house, and try me, or prove me, or try me now." And this says the Lord of hosts, "If I will not open for you the windows of heaven to pour out blessings upon you, which is not room enough for you to contain it or hold, receive it all." So God's saying, see, if a person is under a curse. There's nothing you can do for that person until they get themselves right with God and do what God says to do. Tithing is a privilege. The tenth belongs to God to begin with. And uh, when we do what God says, then we're, then we're able to be partakers of his fullness of his blessings. And he says, verse 7, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. So, Father, we thank you now. Father, as we pray over our tithes and offerings, Father. Father, we thank you. Your word also says about offerings in, in 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, that you won't do without a hilarious, cheerful giver. So, Father God, when we bring in our tithes and our offerings, Father God, Father, we do it cheerfully and thankfully, Father God, knowing that as we sow our seed, Father God, we, we do expect and we call in, we speak to our seed. We all call in our harvest in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father God, because we know that we can't outgive you. We know that, Father God, whatsoever man sows, that's what he's going to reap. If we sow nothing, we reap nothing. So, Father God, we expect to reap a bountiful harvest, Father, according to your word now, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Was there anything else? Anybody else need prayer? Or anything? Oh, yeah. Teresa, um, I guess Teresa really texted me and said, um, Teresa, message her. Um, and I guess Teresa's not feeling very good. She's having trouble breathing and having an upset stomach. She's out of the ECU or something. I'm sorry. I, I can't she hear, but you're going to come out here. It's hard for me to hear right now. Wait, so pray for Teresa. For her safe trip back? No, she's no? not feeling well. She's, oh, she's not feeling well. And the humidity, because of the humidity or something, and her stomach's upset. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> we're going to pray for. We're already going to pray for a safe trip home. And uh, Father, we lift up Teresa Kelly to you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we we do thank you that for Teresa. She's part of your. She's a daughter of yours. She's part of the body of Christ. She's so special in our lives, Father. We ask you. To, Protect her on her flight coming back home, Father God, when she when they leave to come back to, to, to the Iowa. Father, we also pray for right now that you would stretch forth your hand, Acts 4 and 30. First stomach's upset, whatever is causing that. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you right now that you will cause your healing power, because Romans 8, 11 says, the same spirit that raised up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you, that same spirit will quicken and make alive your mortal body. Will quicken and make alive. So, Father, God, quicken her from the inside out. We see 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he is increased than he that's in the world. So she has a greater one. She has the healer on the inside of her because there's a healing in the house today. There's a healing in her physical body. She's a temple of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 6 and 20, it says she will glorify God in her body and her spirit, which are his. So, Father, we thank you right now. Satan, take your hands off Therese Kelly. We bind up any and all spirits of infirmity and any other foul thing. We claim immunity to her body from anything she might have been around, any, any germs. Every disease or virus infection that touches her body has to die in the name of Jesus. We forbid it to, to multiply. We forbid it to bear fruit. Mark 11, 14, in Jesus' name. Was that, was that it? Pray for it. Oh, and we want to slip up Marty to you that Marty should be out of quarantine tomorrow, I do believe. That's the time. And uh, we do ask for a good report to her. Oh, I got to pray, pray over this. But, uh, uh, Father, we, as we We'll pray, we'll pray for Marty first, Father. We thank you, Father God, for Marty Martin Siebert, Father, a brother in Christ. Father God, he's your child. 
And Father God, we know the things he's gone through. And Father God, we know that's not of you. We know that's a curse. He's not under the curse. He's under the blessing. So Father God, we're asking for, again for your outstretched hand. The, the doctors aren't doing whatever they could do to a point, I guess, or not, and they're not even doing physical therapy to my understanding. But Father God, he's got the Holy Spirit on the inside of him. He's got the healing power of God available to him. <clears throat> But Father God, he'll be strengthened, get up and walk out without even needing your assistance, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. <clears throat> now, Father, this is up to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. As Jesus took the five loaves and two fishes, Father God, we ask you to bless the seed, multiply the seed, Father God, and we ask for full, full, bountiful harvest in Jesus' glorious name. Amen, amen, amen. I guess that's all. So, you're all dismissed. <laughs>